Good morning, good day, good evening, whenever you're watching this wonderful program, The Danny Schneider Show of Music. I'm holding in my hand here a cassette of The Cool Nerds. That's the song you just saw being played. If you'd like a free copy of this cassette, I'd be glad to mail you one free of charge. Just watch for the phone number or the email at the end of the program and I'll mail you one out. Uh, give me a call, give me your address, I'll mail you one for free. Today I have, a, and I'd call him a LA music business legend here uh, in town here. Uh, his name is John Brahaney. Did I pronounce that correctly? That's right. And um, this is the introduction. He's done so many things. He's a musician, a performer, a songwriter, a recording artist, film composer, jingle producer, educator, author, journalist. Mainly today we're going to talk about his uh, book, uh, The Craft and Business of Songwriting. We have a ton of stuff to talk about, but just just as an example, he's um, one of the producers of the Songwriters Expo here in L.A. He's taught at UCLA, several different classes. He's worked for the American uh, Song Festival and wrote the Songwriters Handbook. Uh, six years, he wrote uh, for six years from 77 in the very beginning, he uh, was one of the founders there of the Music Connection. And he wrote an article for six years called Song Mine about songwriting. Um, You've probably seen this around town, the Songwriters newspaper. He's one of the uh, publishers of that. Um, the National Academy of Songwriters, that merged here with this. He's part of the California uh, Copyright Conference. Um, he's on the uh, board of uh, governors of the um, National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences. That's the guys who vote for the Grammys. And um, he's also on Sam Brown's For the Record, that's KP. FK, is mm -hmm. that right? 90.7 on Tuesday night from 10 to 11. They talk about the music business. Um, what haven't you done? Well, uh, some of the things you mentioned first I haven't done for a long time. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of how I got, uh, that was uh, my beginnings in, uh -huh. in the music business. Yeah. Well, let's just start. Let's talk about your book, The Craft and Business of Songwriting, and we have millions of things we could talk about, but let's make this kind of a songwriting show. Let's okay. kind of focus. Right. And, you know, who is this book written for? Is it for professionals only, people that have already written songs, or is it for a very beginner? Who, who, would, who would benefit from this well, book? Well, I, I, uh, I told uh, my, my editor at uh, Writer's Digest Books that I wanted this to be, uh, I wanted people to understand this who had never written a song before in their life. So I want my mother to read this and understand why and how songs are written. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and actually, my mother said she did understand it. So yeah, I was gonna that ask was you. like the, the litmus test of... Uh, did she write a song? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she didn't write a song, oh. no. I think she just didn't get up the nerve to do that yet. I see. Because she probably felt she had a son who was really a hard critic, and, and she didn't want to uh, didn't want to be jeopardize analyzed, our huh? relationship. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't want to be on the showcase. Huh? <laughs> right. Well, you talk about a songwriter's consciousness. How, what is that, and can you develop that in any way? Do you have to be born with it? Well, uh, no, I think um, there are people who, uh, I think it's more um, uh, a question of, uh, about whether you're born with this uh, a talent or not. Um, I think that you, uh, if, you go to, if you go to good schools and, and you have a love of literature, you love to read, you love to listen to music, and you have a kind of an analytical uh, mind and you can kind of figure out what's going on and you're motivated to, to learn those chords and, mm -hmm. and do those things, I think uh, you know, anybody can write a song. What I refer to as songwriter's consciousness in the book is really about um, where, where ideas come from um, for, for songs because ideas are everywhere and, and if you have a songwriter's consciousness you can, you can, dial, you can dial a phone number and you get, a, you get a melody out of that, mm -hmm. you know. Somebody who doesn't have a songwriter's consciousness doesn't get a melody out of that. It's just a bunch of numbers. But if you get the beep, 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 you know, you say, oh, da, 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 you know, you start working it into something. When you know that, you're, you're a musician, you probably do that all the time. Well, I know uh, how, I, how I do it, but, uh, you know, I usually start with a, I uh, go in phases where I'll go around and uh, I'll be, 
writing down little phrases, little yeah. things people say on TV or whatever. In fact, sometimes it's annoying because you'd be laying there on the couch and you're <laughs> comfortable right. and you say, damn, I better get up and go. Yeah. If I want the muse yeah. to keep speaking to me, I better. Well, that's up. the songwriter's consciousness, mm -hmm. that everything that you hear, everything you that you're aware of what's being said in the context of, would this well, that would be a great song idea, you know. Mm -hmm. And you hear on, on good um, on good drama shows and comedy shows on television, you hear some great lines, little you punch know? lines and little yeah, cliche lines. Yeah, a piece of conversation. Uh -huh. You know, you say, "Whoa, wow, it's great! I yeah. gotta write that down." So it's mainly your, what you're kind of saying, if I can paraphrase, it's sort of a you're aware of the fact I'm a songwriter, and so you you be, just become more aware right. of little exactly. phrases and. That's so you, can, you could develop, easily develop that through just being aware. Yeah, probably. exactly. When you uh, write a song, do you uh, think about, you talk in your book about um, knowing your listener. Does that mean you have to go research uh, the demographics? I'm going for males between the age of 14 and 20, or you're trying to picture them in your mind? Or what do you mean by knowing I your hope listener? Not. I hope not. No, uh, it's just, um, I think one of, the, one of the best ways to start doing that is to, is to pay attention to how you listen to, to music on the radio. You know, I think that's, that's the bottom line. You say, how do I, do I, okay, um, uh, did I hear that lyric? Uh, or did I just hear the lyric when we got to the chorus? You know, was that the part that really stuck with me after that song was over? Mm. Uh, how many times did I have to listen to it before I caught the rest of the lyric, you know? Uh, when I heard that first lyric come on, uh, did, I, did I remember it? Did, did it get me interested in listening to the rest of the song? Like, first lines are really important in a song. If you okay. want to grab people's attention with that, you want them to say, oh, uh, wow, this is interesting. I wonder what this is going to turn out to be. Uh, and we, we don't, uh, I mean, most of us are doing something else while we're listening to music, while we're listening particularly to the radio. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if we buy a new album, you know, from yeah. a, a, your favorite al artist, you may sit down, put on your headsets, really get into it. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if we're just listening to the radio, we're doing something else. So you... Good point. So you really have to understand, if you understand that if you want to write for radio, uh -huh. uh, and you're getting to people who are doing something else. And so you have, to make, you have to make them, you have to get their attention, you have to hold their attention long enough for them to say, I love that, what is that? Mm. And, and if a miracle should happen, and the DJ would back announce yeah, uh, the, 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 the song, <laughs> then you would say, oh, let me write that down, I'll go out and buy that. You know? That's, you want to get those people to hear it and to want to hear more and to want to buy it. Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. I never really thought about that, that, um, you, uh, that people, when they listen to music, are doing something else. So you really have to do something to, to you grab, gotta grab them. them. And that first uh, line is very important is what you're yeah. saying. The intro, everything is important. The intro, the mm -hmm. first line, how quick you get to that chorus. Yeah. Well, they always say if you're mailing a demo tape, which I know is kind of a foolish idea to begin with, but if somebody does listen to your tape, you, if you don't catch them in the first like 10 seconds, wherever it's this, it's out. Uh, I well, guess we're all that way. Well, and you know, that's, that's kind of an exaggeration. I mean, there are, although there are, I, I mean, I have done that. I mean, I've put something on and known mm -hmm. within the first 10 seconds that I wasn't going to like it. Yeah. You know, uh, usually I'll give it a, the, I'll wait till it gets into the chorus and, and then I'll, I'll have a, a, a much better idea, unless I'm critiquing the song, in which case I listen to the whole song. And, right. So know thy listener as thy knows thyself. Oh. Shakespeare, <laughs> or something, maybe that's good. Um, I've just pulled some things out of your book, and I'll just run them by okay. you. And there's little subjects to talk about, and because I know you, when you uh, write a song, you say sometimes you have to fight with this like inner critic. Well, even though you're trying to know your listener and. And you're, yeah. you got this critic, what is this self-image and inner critic telling you you, you suck or what is yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, be, I want to clarify something uh, else uh, too though. I think people, um, people very seldom write for someone else or write with someone else in mind. I think at a point where you start to say, I want to make a living doing this mm -hmm. and I want to get other, other recording artists 
to record my songs, then you really have to develop a, an understanding of who that artist might be, what, oh, okay. what style of things uh, you, you naturally, but you should always come from where you're comfortable as a, mm -hmm. as a musician. What kind of music you love. I mean, if you're into R&B, you don't want to say, well, you know, I think I'll write a country song. Yeah, I've uh, done that. Because in the disco phase. Because <laughs> it usually doesn't work <laughs> unless you really live and breathe country music. Yeah. Then you know what, more about what, what works. But the inner critic, yeah, it's that voice that says, you know, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? I mean, you think it, you're going to write as good a song as Paul Simon or, or, or Paul McCartney or any, you know, do you think, I mean, you want to be in that league? And, and so, like... I've had people even so, tell me that. <laughs> yeah. So how do you, you know, what, what makes you think you can do that? And, this, and a lot of times it comes from, from when we're little kids, from our parents, you know, who say, oh, you can't do that, you know, or say, you know, you're just a girl. You can't, you know, you don't think you could do, do that. It's, you know, that stuff stays with you for a long time, those voices. And you get afraid to, to just start something. Uh, which is the, is the hardest thing of all, to just, to just start because you think, oh, uh, and, and you can let that, that, that critic voice defeat you before you get anywhere. And also, it's, it's a good technique when you start, um, you gotta, you got to send that critic out of the room. Send that critic to a nice place. I mean, dialogue, as they say, with your, with your critic, because it is something that you can, I mean, it's like you can talk to it. And, and just say, while I'm, while I'm brainstorming this song, I'm just going to sit down here and write page after page of whatever comes into my head about this. And I'm not going to worry about whether it rhymes. Or I'm not going to worry about whether it's, a, it's the, the meter is right or, or any of that. I'm just going to write until I get some ideas to develop. And I'm not going to say, oh, that sucks. I'm, Unless I'm it's Paul good. McCartney. It's not yesterday? Yeah. Actually, that's a, that's a technique that Paul McCartney uh, uses, and he, that? and he learned that, that a stream of consciousness and suspending the critic. Uh, and he said that um, uh, he was taught that by uh, Quincy Jones, who said, just sit down and write anything. So he wrote scrambled eggs, you know, before yeah, he wrote, right. and he turned that into yesterday. Uh -huh. But he had to just have to get something down. So, so that's really important that you allow yourself to get into the flow, you know, <laughs> and just and and don't get stopped by, you know, by that voice that says, "Oh, come on, that's that's a terrible line. Why would you, you know, write a line like that? That's so stupid." Don't. I mean, just you got to put them away and and not listen to that. But you got to say. You're going to come back a little later when I finish this oh. because that's when the critic comes in. Well, that's that's nice. when you say, okay, which one of these ideas is really worth putting into a song? You know, what are the, how can I rhyme this? That's academic kind of stuff and is not the most important. The most important stuff is you get a great idea going. Get a great idea going and start. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. So you can, in a way, develop a partnership with this inner critic person. Right. That's so right. You're, you're valuable, but yeah. come back when I'm like, when I get through with this part, you know. Yeah, when I'm polishing it. Yeah, right. I like that idea. That's pretty good. What, is, uh, what are song dynamics? Well, song dynamics are, are the techniques that you use uh, to, to help people pay attention to you. Like that person who's driving in the car and who's uh, ironing or who's doing their housework or is at work somewhere. You have to get through to them. Dynamics are the contrasts that you create in your song to pull people's ear. And a lot of times, you know, I'll use an example. I, I was talking to a friend of mine one time uh, who is a graphic artist, a commercial artist. Mm -hmm. And he had mentioned a, a, a phrase called pattern interrupt. And I said, pattern it's interrupt. It's like Tony Robbins to me. I said, <laughs> pattern <laughs> no, interrupts. No. Pattern interrupt was really kind of, and I said, well, what, is, what do you mean by that? That's an interesting phrase. And he said, well, you know, if you've got, if you've got a series of diagonal lines and you've got a circle and you've got more diagonal lines, where does your eye go? Uh -huh. You know, it goes to where that pattern is interrupted, ah. you know? And I said, wow, it's just like, it's just like a song, a song dynamics. Mm. That's what that's about because whenever, that's why most choruses are going to have a different melody. Uh -huh. When you get into a, a you chorus, gotta, you, can't, you gotta interrupt the pattern. Goes to a different melody and, and a different groove sometimes. A uh, different lyric meter in your, your words will have a pattern. Mm -hmm. That's the lyric meter. Mm -hmm. And so you think about that and you think about 
like yesterday. I mean, da 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 da. When it gets to da da da, your your ear goes to that because that's a a, a change. Mm -hmm. So that's a different lyric meter that's changed within the same verse. Mm -hmm. And if you can do those kind of techniques, uh, be aware of those. then be aware of those as a, as a, a commercial writer. Mm -hmm. And also as a writer who wants people to pay attention to them and remember their songs because mm -hmm. those are things that m help to make songs memorable. I'm going off the tangent here a little bit, but when you Go mentioned off. that, you I, my, remind me of what Frank Sinatra is so famous for, his phrasing. Yeah. Maybe in a way, that's one thing made him so uh, popular. I mean, he isn't it is. the greatest voice in the world. I personally think even, even the, the late Sinatra was great. I li like to listen to him. Yeah. But maybe it was his uh, phrasing. The phrasing, it was. And he was, he's, he was a master of that. That of, keeps your ear tweaked. Yeah. Right? And of conversational phrasing. When he, and so he chose his songs very carefully mm -hmm. so that when he sang them, he would sound, it would sound very conversational. Right. Um, and, and like he was talking to you. And so that's, it, it, so it creates a very intimate feeling in a listener mm -hmm. that someone is, is talking to them. Mm -hmm. You don't get that from opera, you know? That's right. It's like, you, you, go, to, you know, so, but this is very intimate the way he, uh, he phrases. So he, he chose his songs very carefully, what he's saying. Yeah. I know, I think I, I you know, that sometimes there's a song that I really love love the song and would like to perform it myself, but I, it, I run through it and it just doesn't fit with me. It's like maybe some clothes I see in the, in the mall, I go, man, that's great, and I would buy it but never wear it because it just doesn't... Yeah. Doesn't fit your fit, style or your... Fit. Yeah. Yeah. Should you follow trends like, you know, uh, I know often when in the music business, you know, you, they'll get a, a trend going, whether it's alternative or maybe it's uh, a trend whatever. business, yeah. It, should you, as a songwriter, is it a good idea to, um, maybe to, as a beginning songwriter who wants to be successful, should, is it a good idea to kind of try to hop on that train as a way to get in? Or should you try to anticipate trends, or should you not pay any attention to that at all? Or? I think you shouldn't pay any attention to them at all as, as a writer, as a writer-artist. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, as, as a writer who's just writing songs for other people to sing, mm -hmm. uh, I think you probably need to pay a little more attention to it um, just because you're going to have to write a song uh, if you want to get it recorded to some, for someone who is recording and you have to kind of know what their, what their style is and how to write for them. But that's not so much about trends. Mm -hmm. I, I really think um, people, people should think about creating trends. And the way trends are created really is that you, you do your own you know, you do your own thing. You, you, you listen to, there's a period when everybody learns, you know, where you listen to other people. Mm -hmm. Every guitar player, you know, has like a, a guitar idol, you right. know, a guitar god that they, they listen, they, they do all the, all the riffs and then they go to somebody else and learn their licks and their, but you learn licks that, f that feel, that resonate with you. You learn styles that feel good to you. And after a while, you start to evolve a style that's your own. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it's, it was interesting to be, for instance, we did a couple of songwriters expos in, in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. And Austin is a real melting pot of, uh, of styles. Uh, it's a, a lot of blues. Mm -hmm. It's got a great blues tradition, country, sort of renegade country tradition. It's always had a big rock uh, uh, tradition, uh, Texas. And, and so you have but in Austin, there are tons of places, of clubs, where you can play. And so, you know, you'll have somebody being in a country band for a while, then they'll be in a blues band for a while, then they'll play some rock, and, you know, so you have some, some sort of uh, hybrid styles that, that come, out of, uh, uh, come out of Texas. And, and there, you know, you have individuals who have a, their own individual styles. That's probably maybe a good way to think about it, maybe those, the, the word hybrid, I like that. Yeah, and it is really what, what, what happens when, if people are, if people play a lot and learn, want to learn a lot of different styles, they'll, they'll resonate with, uh, certain things will stay with them and, uh, and they'll use those. And sometimes we can hear artists and hear what their influences yeah. were. You're not going to believe this. We have just a couple minutes left. No. And I wanted to ask you one uh, one more thing too. You talked about the fact that 
uh, there are, in songwriting, there are no rules, but there are principles. Yeah. And I kind of like that. Can you talk yeah. about that for just one sec? Yeah. And then give the listeners, a, a songwriter out there, one piece of advice that they can do uh, right today after they watch this program, okay. what they should do okay. to help them. Um, principles. Uh, and uh, the biggest principle to me uh, for, for writing um, uh, songs that a lot of people are going to enjoy is is that you need to find the balance between predictability and surprise oh, yeah. you know mm -hmm. you need to if it's if something's too predictable you get bored with it your ears get tired of listening to it uh -huh. if it's there's too much surprise you don't know where you are and you're kind of lost in it and you tune out so you need to find that balance and i think that's true of most uh uh you know mass market mm -hmm. uh, arts um, and, and a piece of advice uh, would be um, to just write. Get up every morning, write for 10 minutes, uh, write about anything you feel like. Don't think about writing a song, just write. Just write. And, uh, a my stream of consciousness? Yeah, just my friend Pat Patterson uh, calls this uh, the, um, well, it's kind of like the morning pages in, in, uh, in the artist's in way. The artist's way. Book, yeah. yeah, and uh, Pat Patterson uh, just calls it object writing because what he does is uh, you just look for an object in your room or whatever you are when you get up and just start writing about that, what memories that brings back, you know, and, and, just, mm. and just write for 10 minutes, then stop. You know, don't you don't have to worry about finishing anything. Don't create pain in yourself. No, yeah, don't don't put any heavy, you know, any expectations on yourself. I love Just that. Right. That's, I, I wish we had more time to talk. I'm sure you got a ton of more of those things. Maybe we can do another show. I hope. I would do. love to do another show. Now look, I'm this was doing far that. too short. Yeah, far too short. Okay, John. Thank All you right, very, Danny. Very much. It was a pleasure being here, man. And uh, that's John Brahaney uh, in his book, The Craft and Business of Songwriting. Okay. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.